Hey, what's up? All right, so this video is about graphing linear equations. It's about graphing lines, all right? So I'm gonna um, give some examples here, all right? And I'm gonna try to explain the steps. So first thing we need to graph the lines, we need to, um, we need to graph the Cartesian plane, okay? So Cartesian plane, the xy plane, is just a system of coordinates that we're gonna use. So here we go. We have an x-axis right here. We have our y-axis right here. So um, the first thing you want to know about graphing a line is that there's a certain form of a linear equation which is very helpful to do so. And that is slope-intercept form. And the way you write that is it's y equals mx plus b. This is called slope-intercept form. All right, And in this form, you have to remember that m is the slope. b is the y-intercept. Okay, um, so let's say they gave us an equation, all right? Let's say we had an equation that looked like um, y equals one-half x plus three. Now, the way that I know that this is a linear equation is because it just has a single power of x. This is just x to the one, okay? So I know that the graph of this equation is going to look like a line. Now, looking at slope-intercept form and looking at this equation, do you see how there's kind of a correspondence between these two equations? So y is y, m is one-half, x is x, and b is positive 3, right? Okay, so using that information, we can use the numbers that we see here, one-half, which is the slope, which is m, and three, which is the y-intercept, which is b, to, to kind of um, help us draw a picture of this line. So the first thing you want to do is you want to look at three. This is where you start. This is the y-intercept. So you say whatever this number is, this is positive three, so I'm going to put my pin right here. I'm going to put a dot right there. Now, why did I do that? Well, the reason I put a dot on three is because this is where I would be if I counted starting from here. This is always where you start. Starting from here, if I counted up one, two, three on the y-axis, this is going to be my y-intercept. So the reason this is called the y-intercept is because this is the place where it intercepts the y-axis, okay? So you start from zero and you go one, two, three. You count upward by three. If this was a negative three, I would have counted downward, but since it's positive, I counted upward. Okay, so there's a dot. All right, now what do I do with this one-half? Turns out this one-half is the slope of the line. And if you'll recall, if you recall, slope equals rise over run. So if I said, in this case, the slope is one half. So rise over run is one half. So what this means is that I have a rise of one and a run of two. See where I got this one half? I got this one half from right here, okay? So the rise is one because it's the top number and the run is the bottom. So rise, what it means is I put my um, pin on this dot and I do a rise of one, positive one. So I go upward one. And then I go a run of two. So I go up one over two. Boom. The reason I went up and right is because this is a positive number and this is a positive number. So positive one means up, negative one means down. Positive two would mean right, like we did, because this is positive, and negative two would mean left. So that's very important. In terms of rise, Positive means up, and negative means down. In terms of run, positive means right, and negative means left. Okay, so you got to keep that in mind because, and the reason is, is because this is the positive direction, and this is the negative direction for x, and then for y, the positive direction is up, negative direction is down. So I just want to go over that. Okay, anyways, so we have our two dots. Okay, we have our two points. Now, um, we can just simply actually just draw a line between them, and that's how we, we'll get our equation. So I'm going to draw a line um, right here. So that's the graph. It's a line. It has a slope of 2 because it's up 1. Excuse me, a slope of 1 half because it's up 1 over 2. And it has a y-intercept of 3 because 3 is how high it is when it crosses the y-axis. OK, so that was one example. Um, this was easy because this equation here was already in slope-intercept form. It, it already matched up to this form when, it, when they gave us the equation. What if we had a different sort of uh, situation, though, in which we actually had to use some algebra to 
uh, modify the equation a little bit and get it into slope intercept form before we could graph it. That's what I'm going to show you next. Okay, so I'm going to draw another, uh, I'm going to draw another coordinate system, another graph, just so I can not have to <laughs> have a try to scrunch things in because I just wanted to make this clear. So um, here's our x-axis and our y-axis. All right. So now suppose that they give us an equation that looked like this. What if they said, okay, 4x plus 2y equals negative 10. So the first thing wrong with this equation is that it needs to be in this form. It needs to be in a form that looks like y equals mx plus b. You can say that to yourself over and over. y equals mx plus b. y equals mx plus b. That's, you have to memorize this because this is the only form of the equation in which it makes it easy to graph the line because you can clearly see what the slope needs to be and you can clearly see what the y-intercept is going to be. Okay, so what's the first step here to get this into slope-intercept form? Notice, what we're basically trying to do is just get y by itself. We're trying to essentially solve for y. So, in order to get y by itself, I need to get rid of this 4x. Okay, so I'm going to take this 4x, and I'm going to subtract it from both sides. Okay, so I'm going to go subtracting from both sides. This crosses off, so my new equation simply looks like 2y equals negative 10 minus 4x. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I still have to get rid of this positive 2, because notice, see in slope-intercept form how I just have a single y? I can't have any number multiplying the y, so I have to get rid of it. So I divide by 2, divide by 2, I divide by 2. I'm dividing both sides of the equation by 2. This goes away, great, perfect. Now I have a single y. This is going to be a negative 10 over positive 2. It's going to give me a negative 5. And this is going to give me negative 4 over positive 2 is negative 2x. Okay, final thing I'm going to do is just for um, cosmetic reasons, I'm going to switch these two terms around, okay? I'm just going to say y equals negative 2x minus 5. I didn't do anything. I just changed the order, okay? And the reason I did that is because I just want this to be more... Um, I just want it to be more obvious that it's matching up with slope-intercept form. In fact, I'm going to write that underneath it so again so we can see exactly, um, you can see exactly what this is, right? <laughs> Whoops, I just messed up. It's supposed to be b. Okay, so notice, y equals mx plus b is corresponding 1 to 1 to y equals negative 2x minus 5. What that means is that m and negative 2 go together, and b and negative 5 go together. So if I were to write this out, m equals negative 2. b equals negative 5. So the slope is negative 2, and the y-intercept is negative 5. Um, recall, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pin, and I'm going to put it on the y-intercept. So b equals negative 5. So I'm going to start at, at the 0. I'm going to start at the origin. I'm going to count downward by 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Number to dot. The reason I counted downward is because this was a negative 5. Remember last time on the first one it was positive, I counted upward. This one's negative, so I'm counting downward. Okay, so this is my y-intercept. I know that this particular point is actually going to be a point on the equation, or on the, on the line, okay? So now the question is, though, is where do I go from here, right? Well, that depends on the slope. Recall that our slope is equal to negative 2, all right? Now, if I were going to rewrite um, negative 2 in a more... Um, way in a better way to where I could see what the slope is, I would rewrite it like this. Instead of negative 2, I'm just going to think of this as negative 2 over 1, right? Because anything over 1 is itself. But now, the reason this is important is because now I can clearly see that this is rise over run, which means I have a rise of negative 2 and a run of positive 1. So, if you remember, if, so if I count downward by 2 and rightward by 1, because remember, down means po negative, and up means positive. In terms of run, right means positive, and um, left means negative. So negative 2 over 1 means I count downward by 2, rightward by 1. So downward by 2, rightward by 1. I'm going to put a dot right here. So cool. So now I have two dots, and so all I do to graph the line is simply um, draw a line to connect the two. And it's going to look like this. There we go. So that's the graph of this line. Um, so I'm going to do a quick overview. Okay. First thing we did is we got an equation that was already in slope-intercept form. So all we had to do is we just had to look at one half and realize that it was the slope. We had to look at three. We realized that was the y-intercept. 
So we put the dot here, we put the dot on three, we said rise over run is one over two, so we went up one over two, draw the two dots, draw the line. Okay, cool. The second example that I gave you was um, an equation that was not already in slope intercept form. See, it didn't have a y by itself. It was all jumbled up. So what I had to do is I had to do a little bit of rearranging first in order to get it to where it looked like this nice little y equals mx plus b. So we got it into that form finally. It turned out that it was y equals negative 2x minus 5. Then I looked again, just like I did the first time, I looked at the correspondence between m and negative 2 and b and negative 5, and so that's why I could find out, I, I, I could identify by the form of this equation what m and negative 2 was, or excuse me, what m was and what b was. Okay, then I use that information starting with the fact that I know that this point right here is a point in the line because this is the y-intercept because it's negative 5, so I counted 5 downward. And then all I did from here was I just looked at the slope. I realized that negative 2 is the same as negative 2 over 1. Negative 2 is the rise, positive 1 is the run, and I, so I went down 2 over 1, I got 2 points, and I drew the line.